Hey guys, welcome back to Eel, Arkansas. So tonight, uh, I'm going to work on trimming and chamfering and new burning these uh, 6.5 Creedmoor cases. I've got about 300 to go through. Um, they're all primed, ready to go. And once I get them done, I'm loading them with the 144 grain Lapua FMJs. So I found that I really like these a lot and they shoot really well. But it's just a full metal jacket, uh, you know, a blunt tipped projectile, full metal jacket. And they've got a really nice high uh, ballistic coefficient. It is 0.636. They're like a match grade FMJ. And yes, there is, I could buy PPU FMJs that are 139 grain. The ballistic coefficient is not nearly as high. And, you know, with I haven't tested them or even really looked at them in person, but I'm sure that their uh, consistency is not as good as the Lapua bullets. But they are about half the cost. Um, these are, I want to say about 55 60 cents a piece for these bullets and the uh, ppus you can usually pick them up for about 30 or so 30 to 35 cents a piece somewhere in there so not quite half as much but a significant difference in cost um but i chose to do with the lapua uh bullets because of the higher ballistic coefficient they're a little heavier 144 grains um these could be used to run in my AR-10 and also run in my bolt action 6.5 for a precision round. And, and I've already worked up a, a load, seeding them to the depth that they need to be to be able to run reliably in the magazines uh, for the AR-10. And... Which is great because it feeds good in the AR-10 and it also feeds good in the bolt gun. Now, of course, I can run uh, for the bolt gun. I could see them a lot further out and make single single feed rounds out of them and get a little more powder in there and a little more speed out of them. But honestly, in the 26-inch upper uh, UPR-10 from Uintal Precision, I'm running 2985, I believe, is what I'm running. So... Uh, right at 3,000 feet per second with the 144 grain FMJ. And then out of the 16 inch upper on the AR-10, um, I believe they're running a little over 2,600, like 2,640, 2,650, somewhere in there. So definitely no slouch in that area. And if you look at the ballistic data on it, out of the 26 inch upper this bullet will stay supersonic to about 1900 yards which is a long long ways so potentially it could be effective up to 1900 yards um as far as being accurate goes uh past that once you know passing through the transonic zone can't guarantee the accuracy as much but it's still going to be fairly accurate even out past 1900 yards now in the 16 inch hover because of the loss in velocity from the get-go from the muzzle um it shortens it shortens your supersonic range by about 200 yards or so it gets it out there about 1700 to 17 or 50 yards so like right around a mile it's still supersonic out of the 16 inch upper so i mean if you think about it ballistically that this bullet in that cart in the 6.5 cartridge uh, out of a 16 inch AR-10. Of course, these are hand loads; they're not factory loads. I wish somebody would factory load these, but to my knowledge, there's nobody that loads this 144 grain for fact, you know, from a factory on a mass scale. Um, but it makes one hell of a battle round, you know. I mean extremely accurate very flat shooting and potent you know pretty powerful um 
and will be accurate for a very long ways. You can have a semi-automatic rifle that's pretty compact, uh, like like the AR-10. See, this is uh, it's with the stock extended, but with it collapsed, this is a 16-inch Wilson Combat Barrel Area 419 break on my AR-10, and uh, did the Wilson Combat Barrel and BCG, and then everything else is kind of, uh, I guess, kind of off-branded, but basically, if you go to Wilson Combat site and you want to buy uh, their 16-inch uh, Recon AR-10 and 6.5 Creedmoor, this is basically what you would end up with, except for I don't have the Wilson Combat uh, handguard or the upper and the lower the trigger group and stuff all of that is i've just got a mil spec trigger uh i've got arrow precisions m5 upper and lower um i believe this is an arrow charging handle uh, and then this uh handguard was given to me i uh, don't know the brand on it but it's key mod and i kind of want to change it to mlock because the other the rest of my stuff's all mlock anyways and then, of course, I'm still rocking the Burris RT5, and I'm really still liking this guy here. Like, that little sight right there is pretty, pretty badass. Not gonna lie, still like it a lot. I am considering going to an LPVO, though, uh, like a 2 to 10 power, or 3 to 10 power one. Get a little bit more zoom on it. Um, but other than that, pretty standard setup, Magpul MOE stock and grip, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, with this bullet loaded the way I got it, it really shoots good. Now, as I've said before, with the 6.5 Creedmoor in a semi-automatic uh, platform, is that occasionally you know most of the brass the majority of the brass for six five cream is all large primer pockets and it's a pretty high pressure round it's you know arguably it's a magnum cartridge because um, we're running sixty five thousand psi at max pressure and you know on large primer pockets there's more surface area in that primer pocket to spread out uh you know, and the pressure can act on more surface area. So the primer pockets do uh, eventually end up getting a little bit loose and the primers will start coming out of them in the semi-auto rifles. Now with the bolt action where you're closing the bolt and you fire it and there's no reciprocation to it, um, it pretty much holds the, that primer in the back of the case. It's not, you're not going to have to worry about it coming out. Um, but in the AR-10, I have had two malfunctions where um, the primer has come out of the casing and then jammed up in the rifling. And where it jams up is, in both cases, is right where the lugs on the bolt lock into place. Uh, it gets in that area where the lugs go in to turn and they can't push in and lock and turn all the way. And, and then... But basically the bolt's still out of out of battery at that point and it can't fire and it just kind of jams the operation up and it happened the exact same way both times that i had that malfunction uh but considering that was you know two malfunctions on a few hundred rounds or a couple well not quite i probably have about 200 shots through this rifle maybe um so not that big a deal and the malfunctions i had were with brass that i had reamed the primer pockets on the rest of this brass that i'm working on right now i've not reamed the primer pockets on but a few pieces of it are up there in like four to five firings and some of it you know has only been fired once or twice so uh, i expect that i probably am going to run into that situation again and you know who knows? But now that I know when that situation occurs, I know exactly what to do, and I can fix that problem, that malfunction, pretty quick. 
and then keep on shooting, you know. So, and that's one of those things is, you know, it's one thing to have a rifle and have a rifle set up the way you like it. But if you're not out there actually shooting it and training with it, um, and you have a malfunction and you're not ready for it, that can be a real bad situation for you. So, get out there, shoot your guns, train with them, set aside money to buy or make training ammunition, and, you know, make sure you have, you know, everything you need to be able to, you know, you know you to where you you really know your rifle. That's what you, that's where you need to be. You really really need to know the firearms that you are carrying. If you're carrying a pistol, same thing. You need to train with it. Go shoot it. Um, I don't shoot my pistols enough, and I'm gonna start getting into more of that because I've got a lot of pistol reloading I need to do. I've got tons of brass and stuff that need to be loaded. So. Anyways, I just wanted to go over that. Um, I'm going to get into trimming all of this brass tonight. Hopefully get it all trimmed up and uh, get it all chamfered and deburred. And then tomorrow night I'll actually start loading it. And uh, I'll have about 400 rounds of 6.5 Creedmoor to load. It's probably going to take me uh, a few days to get it done. Because uh, I like to pay extra close attention to what I'm doing, loading rifle ammunition. So usually 50 rounds will take me a couple of hours I'm doing it on I mean, of course I'm loading it single stage um, paying extra close attention to everything the way you know the way everything's running so with that being said uh, we'll see you guys next time please like share subscribe and leave comments down in the comment section below thanks for watching Peter Arkansas